Zio Agito, correct? Speaking. This is John Toei. The John Toei. Listen, we've been taking your criticism to heart and have made some adjustments for Revice in case you haven't noticed. You didn't care for Akaishi, so we lubed up Ortega and shoved him right back into the show. Hikaru, I took back his main character status and stuck him into the background. Plus, you wanted that Genta vs. Veil fight, so I gave it to you. Also, Daiji is decent again. But finally, we are giving Sakura absolutely what she needed. Yeah, but Virgaga page 2 is still a thing. Listen, I'm willing to bargain on that. No Dear Gaga part 2, but... I need you to do something for me, in return. What? Oh, it's already in production. No, not this time! And I will catch you at the bank. Back by popular demand, your boy Turbo Ryuki returns, and more upgraded than ever. Perfectly fitting, as all the last minute upgrades just keep coming so close to the finish line. You heard the man though, we are revisiting some old plot threads, pulling some straight out of our asses just for the sake of fandom, and the rejections just keep on coming. Revice 45 has a lot going on. Let's get to it. Iki's memory loss is in full swing, since he can't even remember if sending Gifu to his dimensional old folks home was even a good idea to begin with. Finally freed from his four month bukake party at Gifu's, drenched Ortega makes his glorious return. Not once to miss out on the arrival of the best villain in Revice, Hiromi, Daiji, along with the former Gracias attire having folks Hana and Tamaki go to greet him. Although Tamaki almost doesn't hold back, his first rejection comes instantly, with Hana holding him back. Quick to acknowledge stuff that myself as well as the people in the fandom have pointed out, it's kind of weird that Ortega has to go ahead and pay for his crimes, but all Aguilera had to do was get some loving from Sakura, a wardrobe change, drop the Spanish name, and then later hit up Target for an endorsement for all the things to be forgiven. She, however, agrees and says that she's gonna go ahead and turn herself in once this plotline is over. I'm sure this will not get undone. Tamaki, not wanting to have his friend zoned membership card being locked behind a paywall, rejects this notion, but doesn't voice it. Hiromi then gets revenge on Ortega by slapping the cuffs on him. The Bukake just ain't over yet. The next phase in Gifu's plan gets the go-ahead with a swarm of bone-handed wing bug things making their way into people's ears. Triggering a transformation of the Jello variety, this week's episode is brought to you by Jello. When demons got you down, say hello to Jello and give Terry and yourself a new life. Iki continues to mope around the happy spa when Busan returns to give us more information on the best dad who left to get milk and still hasn't returned. Speaking of gone daddies, with the fighting over and the daddies missing, it's time for George to pack it up and go somewhere. It's cool though because he's clearly got a wallet that isn't murdered and in the ground like my own. Since he's driving this nice new car, so he's clearly got a penthouse somewhere. Having Vice to carry out his CSM collection and then leaving him behind, that's when the voice of our terrible antagonist reaches out to Vice. Lovecov, now sporting a slit in the back, chills out with Sakura at the empty weekend base. That's when the piece is interrupted with the squad ready to showcase off just how popular Jello has become. And it's odd, since Jello hasn't been this hyped up since the Jello shots became a thing back in like 2001. So, what could have caused this? Clearly, it's Gifu's way of saying that the party is not over. They hack social media just to see what people are saying, but they could have just as easily gone on Twitter and noticed that Gifu Jello Party was trending in Japan. Is this too much Jello? No, absolutely not. What the bugs appear to be doing is taking the humans they embody and then snatch out their inner demons, upgrading them in the process to Giftarians. Seeing things go down, the squad heads out to fight, but here is where Tamaki gets his second rejection. Tamaki is forced to stay back 
never getting that character redemption arc. How come you don't want me, man? Remember Hell Giftarians? I remember. Well, they came back. But do they talk? Absolutely not. This fight is split between the boys and the girls, with Hana and Sakura taking on their fraction of mooks, but with Love Cub wanting to fight as well. Sakura notices a gash coming out of her backside. Thinking that she's hurt makes her just want to lay the wallop on the mooks, with some flashy assists from Hana. Iki and Vice get a CG upgrade with a more fleshed out version of their Magnesis attack, all while Vice suppresses the voice of Grandpa in his head. Using their internally stored Vice stamps makes some sort of arm extrusions, and then they just lay down the law. You know, if only they had the ability that could split themselves into various different versions of themselves, and just take on all these enemies at one single time, that could have been a thing. Daiji, on the other hand, keeps talking to himself during this fight. With Curry Boy hungry for some action, Daiji acts like he's the better character for being the one in control at the moment. Vice rushes off, sending his grandpa to voicemail, as Love Cove's backside continues to expand. Of course concerned that the suit's zipper is now becoming visible, Sakura tries to shelter Love Cove some more. While also being oversheltered, Tamaki asks Hiromi, how can he just keep on holding to all those L's, since he feels like he's the next in line for the crown? Hiromi gets it though, Tamaki wants to save folks, and that's just natural. Most folks want to protect others, not be protected. Though, this nugget of character development for Tamaki actually goes right to Sakura instead, as she starts to understand just where she's messing up with Love Cove. More teasing with George continues, visiting the grave of his daddy once more, and Vice gets possessed by the Gifusi. Realizing that his cuddle buddy is now missing, Iki goes to find Vice and founds him almost instantly, but is greeted by Grandpa Gifu instead. Citing that humans are the real demons, he uses Vice as his mouthpiece and summons Gracia Sentai Deadomans, minus Julio. Daiji shows up, and since these are baddies that they have beaten before with just their base forms, he spills the curry on the floor and lets Kagero go out and do his own thing. The girls show up, but that's when Gifu likes keeping the sexes separated, and he distracts the ladies with some cannon fodder. With the fighting taking its toll on Sakura, Love Cub straps on the Heelys and glides all the way to her safety. Seriously, if you zoom in on this scene, you can clearly see the wheels. Kick to the side and being proven useless, Sakura really didn't listen to Hiromi earlier and only pretended to listen. Taken aback from all this, Hana swoops in to say that she didn't have to listen to Hiromi's words because she did. At the real fight, Kamen Rider Evil finally getting a chance to get some long overdue wrecking beats up a pile of reused assets only for Gifu to summon them over and over again. Getting knocked back quickly, but Toei remembering that they have toys that need to come off of the clearance shelf, they swap back, so we see the return of not just the suit of Kamen Rider Evil, but Kamen Rider Live. And then, they throw in Jaggle form as well. Returning to Evolity Live, and trying to take the fight back to Gifu, he won't get struck down a second time, and uses hand-waving CG attacks to take him down. Taking things over to the ground level, the Deadmen's, try to cover Gifu by taking the impact of Revi in Evolity. Gifu then plays his hand. Literally. That's when Gifu, with Vice as his mouthpiece, telling the guys, it's time to join up my dudes! <coughs> with this episode, we get a plotline, too last minute not to address, but I've been waiting for the payoff of the P Bandai exclusive life-size plush that only costs the price of one of your kidneys, as well as the return of the dark edgy curry boy who even inspired me, and for the tease of what we're getting next week. This episode is getting three wet Ortegas and two happy Busans, or rather, an Agito A.
Okay, let's be real for a second. The whole cocoon aspect of the episode, with the bugs manifesting people's symbolism with an upgraded demon, is also a metaphor for what's going on with Love Cove currently. With this base form of hers, just being a cocoon, serving to harbor what lies inside. And of course, we've been getting some upgrades for Love Cove through the course of the series. Originally just being able to say her name like a Pokemon, she debuts as a more baby-like form than anything. But then we get her awkward teenage years shine through as well. And with that, actual spoken dialogue. Love Cub's been growing for a while, so it's finally time to show off the fruit of that plot point. It just seems out of less field for it being in this episode and not having the scar teased at some point in time in the last episode or even the episode before it. Though as long as her new body doesn't look like this monstrosity from the summer movie, I'll be happy. We keep getting the potential buildup for Tamaki as well as George. And with five episodes left, I'm really hoping that we end up getting a satisfactory payoff and that this is not just setups for what's going to happen in the movie. Because if that's the case, then that's a cheap move, John. I did enjoy getting Ortega back, and I really hope that his snatching away in the beginning isn't how they intend to finish off his storyline. There's plenty of room for him to recalculate and find some way to shoehorn himself in as a real opponent again. With Gifu in control of Vice and using him as a mouthpiece, will this be the segue into getting us the evil Iki that we see in the opening? Or will that just remain as a what if portion of the intro and doesn't actually get a payoff. This really is just the setups and member berries episode of Revice, but I still had fun watching. So what did you think about this week's episode of Kamen Rider Revice? Gifu, showing that you can't keep him sealed up for long, Love Cub, exposing zippers, Curry Boy, getting some of the spotlight again, and Moist Ortega. That's it for me, until maybe next time. You never know with Turbo Ryuki. Adios, dead man.